Hello everyone. Today I'm going to discuss about the one of the important topic in surgery subject. So which is, is a breast cancer. So in this topic, so I'm going to discuss about the what is the breast cancer. So introduction of the breast cancer. What is the incidence of the breast cancer? What is the normal anatomy? The types of the breast cancer? What are the risk factors? And also signs and symptoms, diagnosis and management I'm going to discuss here. In the previous classes, we discussed about the what are the different type of the cancers. So what are the risk factors and also what are the medical management and surgical management we already discussed. Here specifically, I'm going to discuss about the breast cancer. So coming to the introduction to the breast cancer. So before going to start the breast cancer, actually what is the cancer? So in the previous classes, we already discussed. Just again, I'm going to just brief about the definition of the cancer. So it is the abnormal and also uncontrollable continuous replication of the cells, which will inevitably lead to the formation of the tumor. So that means uncontrollable. So there is no control of the cell development. So the cell multiplications may happen. So normally the cell control, so the growth and also the division is going to be controllable and also is going to be the, uh, is a measurable, but here is going to be the uncontrollable. So it may use the excessive growth in the abnormal cells this abnormal cell development takes place. So that is called as a cancer. So if it is happening in the breast tissues, uh, it is called as a breast cancer. So breast is nothing but is the mammary, also called as mammary gland, and also it is the adipose tissue. So it is the, the breast cancer is a malignant tumor that starts in the cells of the breast. It is found mostly in the women, but men also can get the breast cancers too. So according to the statistics, so nowadays many people also uh, getting the like uh, breast cancer. So around the one percentage of the cancers are is a um, male breast cancers. So according to the statistics, so this is the breast cancer, the most common malignancy in the women. And also it is the second cause, leading cause of the cancer deaths in the women. So that is the more like a um, dangerous in the women. So this is the second leading cause of the death you know, because of the other compared to other cancers. So if we see the incidence of the breast cancers, so in this uh, incidence is going to be in the one in eight people are going to get the breast cancers according to the US statistics. So in the one person is the eight persons. So one person may chance to get the breast cancers. So that means the very high percentage of the cancers. So in the women, the US will be diagnosed with breast cancer in the lifetime. So maybe it's most commonly this breast cancer uh, will seen in after the age 50 years of age group. So it's going to be after the whole the lifetime that is the until the, if you see the normal lifespan is going to be the 70 to 80 years. So who already reached the 80 people. So at least one person in the eight members may chance to get the breast cancers. So in 2018, according to the statistics, around 266,120 new cases are found in uh, throughout the world, worldwide. So if you see the incidence, so in case of according to the 2017 statistics, so the breast cancers, if you see the 100 percentage, 25 percent are going to be is the, the breast cancer cases. So the remaining 75 going to be is the, the other cancers are the, in the women's. So the deaths in the 25 percentage, so if you take the one from the 25 percentage, so 13 cases are going to due to because of the breast cancers. So compared to the other cancers, so total 13 percent is, is to the due to because of the breast cancers. So coming to the statistics according to the worldwide, so in the worldwide, if you see the incidence is going to be the, is a 1.7 million women. So around 25 percentage of the people may chance to get the, is according to statistic, it will uh, like shows the so 1.7 million people are getting the like a breast cancers. So in this one is the 522,000 are going to be the women. So the remaining are going to be the, the men. And also if you see the, the mortality will be is the, 15 percentage. So out of 25, the mortality, they may chance to get the 15 percentage from the, if you take the, this is the 100 percentage in the, so in this uh, 1.7 um, 1 .7 million people, so out of 1.7 million people, so 5,522,000 are going to get the mortality. And also may chance to get the prevalence is going to get the, 
in the worldwide 6.2 million women are may chance to get the uh, breast cancers throughout the old wide so according to the uk statistics so it shows that in the uk that is a 52000 women are getting this uh, got the uh, breast cancer that is around the 32 percentage of the breast cancers in this 32 percentage so 16 persons may chance to get the mortality so that means out of if you take the 32 percent is the 100 percentage so in the 100 so around the 12000s are going to get the so 53000s are affecting incidents in the 52000s so 12000s are going to be is a like a may chance to get the mortality so and also the prevalence is going to get the 200000s will going to get the more uh, like a prevalence so if you see in the malaysia is going to get the 5.4000s in the women's Uh, they got the in uh, like breast cancers is around the 28 percent of the women. So again, is going to be is a two point like a 2,600 is going to get the like a may chance to uh, they got the mortality and also 18,000.9 around the 19,000 may chance to get the prevalence. So according to the Malaysian statistics, so these are the incidence of the breast cancers throughout the old wide and also it will be depends upon the country to country. <coughs> so in the age group according to the age group if you see the age group so around the 55 to 60 years of age groups is the highest percents of the incidence in the breast cancers so this age group is the more prone to get the breast cancers so coming to the age, according to the age group is uh, the less amount that is under the 20 years is the very rare that is a zero percentage but in between the 20 to 34 it may around the 1.8 and also is going to be is a 9.9 percentage in between the 35 years to the 44 years of age group so above the 75 to 84 is a 15 percentage and less so above 85 is the less percentage so it mean between the less than 34 and also more than 30, 85 the incidence is going to be very less compared to the other age group but highest percentage will be in the after the menopause so this period is the more more prone to get the breast cancers so that is the reasons so everybody have to understand because of the hormonal imbalance so because of the menopause so may chance to get the breast cancers if you take the precautionary measures before the menopause so we can control and we can prevent the breast cancer in the women so if you see the breast cancers so this cancer is going to spread uh, depends upon the involvement of the tissues so this cancer may form in the tissues of the breast so if you what are the structures maybe ductus and also lobules and also which are the like a milk producing glands so there may if there need uh, may chance to get the breast cancer and sometimes so this breast cancer may spread to the uh, through the lymphatic system and also through the blood and also to the other parts of the uh, uh, of the body so it may spread to the other parts of the body through the metastasis so this is about the breast cancers so it may form in the breast tissue as also may spread to the lymphatic tissues okay if you see the normal anatomy of the breast so normal anatomy of the breast so we this breast is nothing but is the adipose tissue is the fat tissues so we can see the the major structures in the breast tissue is the breast muscle the chest muscles also called as pectoralis major and minor muscles and also we can see the the lobules so especially is the mainly is the producing the milk uh, and also nipple areola that is surrounding to the nipple regions the dark uh, structures is called as the areola and also next one is uh, is the uh, ducts which are the lactiferous ducts so which carries the milk uh, from the lobules to the uh, to the nipple and also next one is coming to the fat tissues so these are the major structures in the breast so these are going to be to maintain the like a healthy uh, healthy breast so if any abnormalities around the lobe, lobes or any ducts so it may chance to get the extra growth or may it gives to the breast cancers so how to identify the breast cancers and also depends upon the involvement of the structures so the name it will be different so if it is a, any involvement is in the lobes or if it is any involvement of the ducts so the name itself is going to be changed so we are going to discuss the different type of the breast cancers in the further slides so and also it may chance to get the this blood cancer may spread to the one place to the another place through the axillary lymph nodes especially this lymphatic system also may involves in the breast cancer so because of the lymphatic system involvement this may spread to one place to the another place and also spread to the other parts of the body
So especially from the lymphatic systems, it may spread to the uh, lungs or maybe it spread to the uh, brain and also it may spread to the intestines. So it may distribute the, throughout the body. So it depends upon the severity, it may spread uh, within the fast or maybe it depends upon the time, it may spread to the other parts of the body. And also one more important thing is the involvement of the lymph nodes. So because of the involvement of the lymph nodes, the breast cancer spread to one place to the another place. So it may spread to the uh, lungs and also it may spread to the intestines or maybe liver or maybe it in involve in the spread to the brain. So this is everything through the lymph nodes as well as the lymphatic system and through the blood. So that's the reason yeah, it may spread to other parts through the metastasis also called as the malignancy tumors. So coming to the risk factors, so so many risk factors are identified according to the research studies, so many risk factors are identified to affect the, so the cause two factors for the breast cancers. So coming to the risk factors, first thing is the gender. So most commonly is we can observe in the women, so it's a prevalence is more commonly in the women. So in the one in every 150 cases also may chance to get the, male people also may chance to get the breast cancers. That means most common, according to the statistics, just now we discussed, is a one in eight people in the in the one in the eight people may chance to get the in the women may chance to get the breast cancers according to the U.S. statistics, but in the one in the 150 patients may chance to get in the male patients. And also coming to the older age group, so if the age grows, the cancer may chance to get the, the percentage may chance to get in the uh, cancers. So just now according to the statistics especially the above the 55 age group in between the 64. So may chance to get the highest percentage of the breast cancers may occur in the age group of the 55 in between the 64. And also in case of the any personal history of breast cancer or benign or breast disease. So if anybody got any other benign type of the disorders, so benign type of the cancers, so that means it won't spread to the other parts of the body. If any lump found in the other parts in the breast tissues, it may progress into the malignancy. So in those people, so th those people may chance to get the breast cancers. So is there any like a, uh, a fibroid or maybe other type of the benign type of the cancerous cell, uh, benign type of the tumors or may progress and also may chance to get the a malignant type of the cancers. And one more important thing is the inherited risk of the breast cancer. That means the genetic defects. So if any are in uh, any like any hereditary, if the mother or maybe daughter having the, any uh, sisters or family relatives, if anybody got the cancers, may chance to get to the the children. So this is maybe because of the genetic transmissions. So this also one of the risk factors having the highest percent of the breast cancers. So commenting to the another genetic factors, especially is the uh, is a BRCA1 and also BRCA2. So that is nothing but is the breast cancer uh, gene, genetic genes are the, the main risk factors for the uh, breast cancers. So these are women who carries the BRCA1 and 2 genes have the considerably higher risk of the developing the breast cancers. So especially in case of the, in the lifetime breast cancers, if you see the general populations, so the breast cancer will be in the only 11%. And also, especially the cancer age is the median age going to be 61 years. But who are carrying the this uh, uh, breast cancer genes, especially the BRCA1 and 2. So if you see the BRCA1 is going to be in the 65% of the people may chance to get the breast cancer. That means who are carrying the this, uh, breast cancer genes. So at the age of is going to be the 43. So that means at the age of the 43 who are carrying the this the breast cancer genes. So they may chance to get the 65% of the people may chance to get the breast cancer. And also in case of the BRCA2, that is the breast cancer genetic 2, so may chance to get the 45 percentage at the age of the 41 years of age group. So that is the genetic factors, risk factors. And also another one is the dense breast. So who are got while checking the like while examinations, 
through the like a memory gland memory gram uh, sorry mammogram so this is the special investigation procedures to identify the breast cancers so who already got the like if he, anybody found the breast tissues the dense breast tissues so may chance to get the uh, breast cancers so this in the through the memory uh, mem mammogram so we are going to identify so who already identify the dense breast tissues are the uh, may chance to get the breast cancer and also one of more important things is the breast feedings so nowadays many uh, people are because of the busy schedule and also because of the lack of time or maybe work environment so unable to give the best feeding to the baby the mothers are because of the working environment so in those conditions who are not giving proper breast feeding to the baby so those people may chance to get the breast cancer so highest risk of the breast cancer may occur so according to most studies suggested that the breast uh, breastfeeding for the one year or more slightly reduce the women's overall risk of the breast cancer with a longer duration associated with the greater risk of the reductions so if anybody gives the like a uh, breastfeeding to the baby uh, more than one year so those people are going to get the less risk of the breast cancers so nowadays because of the like a uh, schedule or the busy schedule with the work environment because of men and women both are working so this women also is playing the major role in the workstations so the, because of the busy schedules are unable to do the breast feedings so those people are may chance to get the uh, breast cancers so and also one more important risk factor is the the estrogen hormones so this also may chance to use the <coughs> risk of the breast cancer so who are exposing to the more like a prolonged exposure to the breast tissue to the estrogen so it may give the risk of the breast cancers so this estrogen hormone is made by the body so the main function of this estrogen is the help the body develop and maintain the female sex characteristics so this hormone is there is there in the both in the men and women having the this hormone but this highest percentage will be in the women so especially developing the sexual characteristics so who are more prolonged exposure to the uh, estrogen so may chance to get the breast cancers so being exposed to estrogen over a long time may increasing the risk of the breast cancers so these estrogen levels are highest during the years of the women in the menstruating so who are exposed to the estrogen levels highest percentage those people are more prone to get the breast cancers so especially who are like a early menopause early uh, uh, menarche that means early menstruations and also late menopause so may chance to get the the highest percentage of the breast cancers that means who got the early menstruations so around the like at the age of 10 some uh, girls may chance to get the menopause uh, sorry uh, uh, menstruation at the age of the 10 or maybe 11 and 12 depends upon the person to person so if anybody uh, get the uh, early menstruations at the age of the uh, teens early teens and also is a late menopause so in this period the women may will get the menstruation so during the menstruation they are going to be exposed to the estrogen hormones so because of the prolonged period of the estrogen hormones so may chance to get the highest risk of the breast cancers and also another risk factor is the breast radiations in the early life that means any uh, women so any like uh, exposed to the any radiations because of the other diseases or any uh, lymphoma or in any hodgkins disease so may chance to get the exposed to the breast also may chance to get the breast cancer so if any exposed to the radiation also and uh, may give the breast cancer and also another important risk factor is the weight gain and also obesity after the menopause so because of after the menopause so this because of the accumulation of the fat cells so these fat cells are going to store the estrogen so we can increase the likelihood of the developing the breast cancers so these fat cells are going to be store the estrogen levels so because of the exposure to the estrogen so may chance to get the breast cancers and also another risk factor is the alcohol consumptions who are taking like a, a regular and also is a uh, like a high dose of the alcohol consumptions so may chance to get the breast cancers and another physical and also another risk factor is the inactivity physical inactivity so who are maintaining the sedentary lifestyle so may chance to get the uh, breast cancers so who are active or who are prone or who are doing the <clears throat> 
physical activities regularly, so they're having the less risk of the breast cancers. And also another causative factors and also risk factors are the who are using the contraceptive pills. So contraceptive pills means the birth control pills. If they want to plan the pregnancy or if they want to is a unwanted pregnancies or if they are using some uh, like a, if they want to like a planned uh, like a pregnancies, if they want to plan the child after the marriage. Uh, maybe one or two years are if they using continuously contraceptive pills so these contraceptive pills are this nothing but the birth control pills so may chance to get the uh, this uh, breast cancers and also another important risk factor who are taking the hormonal replacement therapies after the menopause so who are having the hormonal imbalance so because of the hormonal imbalance if they take any like a hormonal therapy it may chance to give the <clears throat> breast cancers so especially after the menopause, so women may chance to get the so many complications or so many symptoms such as the heart flashes, symptoms in the menopause. So in those conditions, if they take the hormone therapy, so this may lead to the highest risk of the breast cancers. Especially, so those people are going to take the estrogen and progesterone. So who are having already uh, no problem with the uterus. So who are having the uterus, so they're going to take the estrogen and progesterone hormone therapy. So they may chance to get the, uh, like a breast cancers. Are who already undergone for the surgical removal of the breast and also uterus. So that is also called hysterectomy. So they have, they can go with the estrogen therapies. So with the estrogen therapy also, they may chance to get the breast cancers. So these are the some factors are going to be influencing the uh, breast cancers. So especially other factors are who, who are having the, uh, that means who don't have any children in the, uh, in, in, during the, their lifestyle, so they may chance to get the breast cancers. So not having the children are having them in the later lives. So if they don't have any children or if they have children in the late forties, so it may chance to get the breast cancers. And also certain kinds of the birth controls. So just now we discussed some pills also is one of the causative factors and a hormone therapy also causative factors. And also breastfeeding also may is interferes the hormonal imbalance also is one of the causative factors for the risk factor for the breast cancers. And also other causative factors also who are smoking and also who are working in the night shifts. So these are also may chance to get the increasing the breast cancer risk. And also some of the, according to some statistics, so and also some of the, some like a medications, some like a perfume, some deodorants, some uh, antiperspirants also may chance the uh, breast cancers. So these are also uh, one of the risk factors for the breast cancer. But according to the statistics, it won't uh, prove that is uh, like a antiperspirants are going to give the much risk of the breast cancers. Uh, it may chance to get the breast cancer, but according to the research activities, until now, there is no exact uh, like, uh, evidence to show the antiperspirant use the uh, breast cancer. So some studies shows that may chance to get the risk of the breast cancers. First, we have to understand, so what is the deodorant and also what is the antiperspirants? So we are now, nowadays, many people are using the deodorant and perfumes and sprays. So these things are going to be, so deodorants are going to be stop the smell. So they are going to get the, stop the odor, the foul smell. And also next about the antiperspirants are nothing but it's going to prevent the sweating formations. So if they use these two types of the, these uh, perfume are, are going to use. So these are going to stop the, the foul smell from the persons. So because of these uh, antiperspirants, so may chance to get the breast cancers. But in this, uh, like a perspirant, antiperspirants, so may chance to get the aluminum. So this aluminum is one of the causative factors for the uh, breast cancers. And also, or maybe if any, uh, like a, during the shaving of the, uh, in the armpit, or may chance to get the cuts. So because of the, these cuts are may chance to absorb the, these aluminum, like a chemicals or toxins. So because of this absorption of the aluminum may chance to get the uh, uh, breast cancer risk. And also next one is the parabens. So these are also is a, one of the risk factors for the uh, breast cancer. So these are going to be commonly found in the deodorants and also antiperspirants. And also some other uh, misconceptions are there. And also these are going to be some of the uh, statistics are showing is uh, some types of the bras and also breast implants also may chance to get the uh, breast cancer. 
But according to the evidence-based researchers, there is no evidence is showing that. So there is no uh, effect of the BRAS and the breast cancers. So there is no credible research showing the, there is no link between the wearing or not wearing the bra, it may won't get the like a breast cancers. So, but, but misconceptions is there. So if the, you, if the women use the bras, so may chance to get the breast cancer. But according to research studies, it shows that there is no either interlink between the wearing or not wearing the bra related to the breast cancers. So it has been claimed that is a underway bra, uh, bras cause the breast cancer, but uh, is, the out, is the obstructing the lymph flow. However, there is no scientific evidence to support these theories. But some people is, uh, is, uh, claimed that is a underwire brass or may obstructing the lymphatic flow. So it may chance to get the breast cancers. But research shows that there is no evidence to get the breast cancers about the, uh, the bra or wearing or not wearing. And also another is, uh, is a misconception is going to be the breast implants. So these breast implants also don't cause any breast cancers. So they don't rise uh, your chance of the breast cancer so it maybe is because of the any other abnormalities or maybe may chance to get the other type of the cancers or other type of the abnormalities, cell developments, such as the anaplastic large cell lymphoma may chance to develop, but it won't give the, is the metastatic tumors or metastatic cancers because of the breast implants. So these are the some important risk factors of the breast cancers. So coming to the about the breast tumors. So if you see the classification of the breast cancers, so these are going to be the two types of the breast cancers. So in the previous classes, we already discussed about the breast cancer types. So these are going to be the malignant tumors and also benign tumors. So the malignant is nothing but is the cancerous tumors. So which is the spread from the one region to the other regions. And benign is going to be not spread to the one part to the other part. It's going to be located at the where the cancer is going to be developed. It increasing the size and also it help. It is also it is going to be occupy the space. So that is the difference between the malignant tumors and also benign tumors. So if you see the benign tumors, so it's increasing the size of the breast. So that means that the tissue is going to be increased. Is like a lump or maybe is like a nodule like like appearance. It's not a cancerous, but it's going to be the abnormal growth. But they did uh, do not spread to the outside the breast. So they are not life threatening. So if anybody get the benign tumors, so it's not going to be spread to the other parts of the body. So if we remove the breast tumor, that is the uh, like a nodule like structures, so we can prevent the, the serious complications. So here the most lumps are caused by the combination of the cyst and fibrosis. So the cysts are going to be formed. The cyst is like a nodule or maybe is because of the extra abnormal cell growth. So we can found, so if you remove the, this fibrous tissue or the cyst, so we can prevent the complications. So these cysts are going to be the fluid filled sacs and also fibrosis is the formation of the scar like tissues. So the cysts are is nothing but is the fluid filled sacs. So the fluid is going to be formed inside the cyst. So if you remove the cyst, so we are going to be like a prevent the, like a space occupying and also prevention, uh, that means we the compressioning the other structures. And as fibrosis is nothing but the scar tissues. So that is the, whatever the development of the extra tissues. So this going to be is a scar like appearance. So these changes can cause the breast swelling and also pain. So because of the, this uh, extra growth and also because of the swelling, it's going to give the compression to the breast tissues. And also because of the compression, it may give the tenderness and also it may give the swelling and also pain. So that is the difference between the cancerous tissues and also that is a benign tumors and also malignant tumor. So, and also according to the classifications, so these are going to be divide the invasive and also non-invasive. So invasive means just now we discussed nothing but is the cancerous that is malignant. So, and also these are going to be the spread from the one place to another place through the metastasis. So this is the next one is the non-invasive one is going to be pre-cancerous. So still in the original positions. So it's going, it's not exactly the, it's not going to spread to the other parts. So even is going to be developed in the way the cancer is going to be developed. But if it is a neglect, if it's not controllable, it may spread to the other parts of the body. So if the progression, it may change into the cancerous tissues or breast cancer. So coming to the types of the breast cancer, so depends upon the involvement of the tissue, the cancers are going to be different types. So if you see the different type of the tissues, so these are going to be, so based on the tissues and based on the invasiveness and also based on the hormones. 
So coming to the basin on the tissues, so the tissue involvement is going to be, so if it is the ducts are involvement, so it is called as ductal carcinoma. If the lobes or lobules are involved, it's called as the lobular carcinoma. So if the ductals are also the cancer affecting the inner lining of the milk ducts, so where the milks are going to be productions, so this going to is called as the, the ductal carcinoma. And also the cancer affecting the parts of the breast, so that producing the milk, so that is called as the lobes. So if it is the lobes involvement, it is called as the lobular carcinoma. If it ducts are, so which carries the milk from the ducts to the and lobules to the, the limb, uh, uh, Nipple regions, so that is called the ducts, so that is called the ducts of ductal carcinoma. So it depends upon the, the breast cancers, type of the breast cancer going to be, is the invasiveness and also hormones. So this just now we discussed the invasiveness is also is the non-invasive means is, uh, is the non-cancerous. So where exactly it's not going to spread to the other parts of the body, so that is the non-invasive. Invasive means it's going to spread to the other parts of the body. For example, it, it may spread from the breast to the uh, lungs, to the lymphatic system, and also through the blood. So if it is the non-invasiveness, it is also called as, is known as the in situ. So it may be, it depends upon the, it's not going, maybe ductal or lobular. If it is a ductal in situ, that means the ductal in situ means it's going to affect to the ductal regions, and also it's not going to be spread to the other parts of the body. And also if it's effect to the lobular in situ, so it's going to be effect on the lobular. So if it is the effect spread to the other parts of the body, so it is called as, so it means the invasive carcinomas. So these are invasive in situ is going to be the lobular carcinoma in situ and also ductal carcinoma in situ. So it's not going to be spread to the other parts of the body. So coming to the, the based on the hormones is going to be the, the ER positive breast cancers. So that means the estrogen receptor positive raised, um, um, breast cancers. And also is going to be the, uh, is a HER2 positive breast cancers. He's going to be the related to the hormonal imbalance. Is a, so these are going to be the different type of the breast cancer. So we are going to discuss it the one by one here. So first one is going to be the inflammatory breast cancers. So in this inflammatory breast cancers, so this is going to be some most common type of the breast cancers. So it affecting the skin of the breast and the skin is going to be looks and also feel warm. So that means what are the signs signs of the inflammatory signs we are going to find in the breast. So these signs are going to be the breast is going to get the swelling and also redness, tenderness and pain and also feel, they feel the warmth. So these cardinal features we are going to observe in the breast. So it's going to get the you can see here the swelling is there, redness is there, tenderness also there. So these are the major features of the inflammatory breast cancers. So it also makes uh, the skin looks the thick and also pitted and may have the orange peel appearance. So if you see here, this structure is going to be orange peel appearance. So because of the redness and also because of the swelling. So the breast may be bigger and also hard and tender and also itchy. But here we are not going to find any lumps in the breast. So there is no nodules and lump, but the breast is going to get the hard and also is going to get the tightness and may use the swelling. So is the hardest to diagnose, it doesn't show well up in the, on the mammogram. So it won't, it won't go and sh shows the any defects in the mammogram. So there is no lump or anything, but only thing is they may chance to get the hardness and also tenderness, swelling and also severe pain, redness. So these are the major symptoms we are going to find in case of the inflammatory breast cancers. So it is more aggressive and also spread more quickly than the other types of the breast cancers. So we are having this uh, like a tenderness and also redness and swellings. So this inflammatory type of the breast cancer is going to be spread more faster than the other type of the breast cancers. So this is going to be diagnosed at the younger age, especially among the Africans women. So according to the statistics, so this inflammatory breast cancers are going to be more found in the, in the African women and is more likely to affect the overweight women. So who are high the overweight and also African women are more prone to get the inflammatory breast cancers. So this is according to the research statistics. And also next one is just now we discuss the types of the, the ductal carcinoma in situ. So ductal carcinoma means is the ducts are going to be affected. So ducts are nothing but which carries the, the milks from the, the lobes to the nipple regions. So the is going to be ducts are going to be affected. So here if the cancer is affected in the ducts, so it's not going to spread to the other parts of the uh, tissues. 
And also if you see here, the normal duct is going to be, duct is nothing but the tubular organs. So it carries the milk from the lobes to the nipple regions. So in the normal, like a duct is going to be like the cells are going to be in the organized in the manner. But in case of the abnormal, that is the carcinoma of the ducts, you can see the extra growth is happening in the ducts. So it's going to be the abnormal development of the cells and the ducts are going to be formed. So these are going to be, so there is no proper, like a flow of the, like a milk production, milk secretions from the lobes to the nipple regions. So this is going to be obstructions is going to be happening. So the presence of the abnormal cells inside the milk ducts in the breast. So this is going to be considered as the earliest form of the breast cancers. So this ductal carcinoma in situ is going to be the earliest type of the cancers. So there is going to be increasing the size. So the ducts is the cancer cells are going to be increased here. So that is the one type of the, like an early stage of the breast cancer. So this is going to be non-invasive. So that means it meaning, it meaning non-invasive meaning means it won't spread to the other parts of the breast. And also spread out of the milk the ducts and has low risk of the becoming the invasive. So it's a very low risk, only it's affecting the ducts. It won't spread to the other parts of the breast. So it's going to be, doesn't typically have any signs of the symptoms. So it sometimes may give the breast lump, breast lump and also the blood nipple discharge. So may, it won't give the, any other complication, any other symptoms, may chance to get the, any lump in the breast and also any uh, bladed nipple discharge. So in the, in the nipple regions, so it may chance to get the discharge. So that is the one of the uh, symptom in the ductal carcinoma in situ. So another one is the invasive ductal carcinoma. So invasive ductal carcinoma means the symptom, the cancer is going to develop in the ducts, so which carries the, the milk uh, from the lobes to the nipple regions. But, so this is the invasive means. So this is going to be spread to the other parts of the body. From here, it may spread to the, like a lymph nodes and also other organs. So if you see it just now, the previously, so in the ductal carcinoma in situ, so it's going to be only spread in the ducts and also only is developed in the ducts. But in the, in the invasive ductal carcinoma, it is going to be develop the carcinoma in the ducts and also it spreads to the other parts of the like a breast tissue. It may spread to the lymphatic system and also it may spread to the other parts of the body. So it's the most common type of breast cancer is representing the 80% of the breast cancers, the diagnosis. So if you diagnose, so these type of the duct, invasive ductal carcinoma is the commonest type of the breast cancer. And next one is the, the lobular carcinoma in situ. So it's going to be the lobes are going to be affected. Lobes means, so which produce the, the milk. So the glands are produce the milks. So there we are going to get the, like a, a cancer development. So, but here also, this also non-invasive one, it won't spread to the other parts. It's the lobes are going to be affected. So if you see that the normal lobes are going to be like a fluid filled cavities are nothing but so here is going to get the milk productions takes place. But because of the abnormal cell growth or del uh, development, so you can see, you can feel the, so there is no spaces in the lobes. So all fill the space, the lobes are going to be is filled with the abnormal cell development. So that is the, the lobular carcinoma. So these are going to be, but only thing is going to be, it's not spreading to the other parts of the body. So here there is going to get the, the, the abnormal tissue development, the increasing the size of the lobes are going to be happening. But may chance if you won't give the proper treatment, so it may become like a, the malignant. So that is the major complications about the lobular carcinoma in situ. So coming to the non -invasive, invasive lobular carcinoma. So it also same thing, it will affect to the lobe, lobes of the, gland, the breast. So that means the way the milk is going to be production is takes place. So here is going to be, but this is going to be spread to the other parts of the body. So this is the invasive lobular carcinoma type of the breast cancer that begins in the milk producing glands, so which are called as the lobules of the breast. So this is going to be the cancer is broken out and also is spread to the other parts of the gland, other parts of the breast tissue through the lymph nodes and also it's spread to the other areas of the body structures. So it's called as the invasive lobular carcinoma. So another one is depends upon the hormone receptors positiveness. So it depends upon the involvement of the hormones. So these are going to be because of the is either estrogen or progesterone. So if you because of the estrogen positive, so it is called as the estrogen receptor is a positive. 
uh, hormone positive. If it is the progesterone hormones, so it is called as the progesterone hormone positive. So if the if it is positive means the tumors that have the progesterone receptor called as the progesterone hormone, the progesterone receptor positive. So if you confirm it the positive or negative, at least one receptor should be positive, either the hormone like either estrogen receptor or is the progesterone hormone. So this type of the cancers may depend upon the hormones, so which are the estrogen and progesterone to grow. And also hormone receptor positive cancers can occur any age, but more common age group in the women who have gone through the menopause. So that means after the 45 to 50 years of age group, so this hormonal imbalance will happen. So because of the hormonal imbalance, so we'll get the hormone receptor positive breast cancer will develop. About two thirds of the breast cancers have the estrogen and also progesterone receptors. So about more than like a two third of people may chance to get the hormone receptor, either the estrogen or progesterone. So cancers without these receptors are called as hormone receptor negative. So if it is present the estrogen and, uh, and also progesterone receptors, so it is called as uh, hormone receptor positive. If it is absent or is uh, in case of the negative, so it is called as the hormone receptor negative. So it depends upon the, the hormone, like if you check the hormonal uh, like a test, so if any absent, so we call that the hormone receptor negatives. So another hormonal one is the human epidermal growth factor receptor positive. So these are going to be the abnormality in the like a growth factor, like a imbalance. So because of the growth factor imbalance, so may chance to get the breast cancers. So, so that is called as the is a human epidermal growth factors receptors. So these, if you see the normal one, so these are going to be, these are growth factor, epidermal growth factors are going to be, so gives the, the development of the normal cells. So if it is the extra abnormal development, is uncontrollable development, you can see the, the extra development. So these receptors are going to give the more signals. So causing the cells growing to more quickly. So inside, because of this, the human like epidermal growth factors are going to give the more signals. So because of the more signals, the cells are going to be developed more faster. So actually this is the, the uh, Herceptin. So these are going to be inhibit the, this abnormal like a hormonal development. So if it is the, it's uncontrollable, so may chance to get the, this, the heart receptor positives may chance to get the breast cancers. And also another type of the breast cancer is going to be the triple negative breast cancers. So triple negative breast cancer, we just now we discuss about the estrogen and also progesterone. So these things, so if anybody get the estrogen receptor negative, progesterone receptor negative, and also is the growth hormone and also epidermal growth hormone also if any negatives. So this type of three receptor negative is called as triple negative receptor, like a triple negative breast cancers. So these are triple negative breast cancers are going to be overall 15% of the breast cancer we are going to be identified. So these things are going to be seems more common in the young women, particularly in the black and also Hispanic women, especially in the black regions in the African peoples. So most commonly affecting the this uh, triple negative breast cancers. And also this triple negative breast cancers is also more common women with the mutation of the, the breast cancer carcinogenic genes. So who are having the, the BRCA1 is a genes. So those people are may chance to get the triple negative breast cancers. And also experts recommended that all people with the triple negative breast cancers, younger than 60 age group tested with the BRCA genes mutations. So like a, well, like a scientist and also physicians, or especially the oncologists. So they're going to recommend who got the triple negative ones. So if they check, so it indicates that, that means who got the this BRCA mutations. So those people are going to make chance to get the, the triple negative breast cancers. So these are the, don't see so many different type of the breast cancers. So it depends upon the hormonal imbalance. So next one is another type of the breast cancer is the Paget disease breast cancer. So breast cancer due to Paget disease. So this is that this, uh, this uh, cancer is going to be happening. So at the symptoms are going to show at the nipple regions. So, but this is going to be the very rare type of the breast cancer. So that starts in the glands in the skin of the nipple regions. So it's going to affect in the skin around the nipple regions. It slowly grows and also occurs only one percentage at the nipple regions. So this is a very rare condition of the breast cancer. It arounds in the nipple skin regions. And also it's around, it's only 1% is made chance to get the breast cancer. 
most people with a pager disease also have the tumors in the same breast and also these type of uh, symptoms so these type of cancers are going to give uh, symptoms like uh, inflammatory symptoms such as the swelling at the nipple regions and also redness and the itchy and swelling which are pain and tenderness may give us and also especially the other symptoms such as the eczema like appearance eczema means how the skin diseases so how there is going to be scaly appearance so it's going to give the eczema appearance surrounding to the nipple and also areola so this type of the usually signs of the breast cancer in the tissue behind the nipple regions so is a surrounding the nipple and also especially is the oozing type or may chance to get the any discharge and also scaly appearance so this is a one also very rare type of the breast cancer so these are the different type of the breast cancers so just now we discuss so is a ductal carcinoma in situ and also is the lobular carcinoma in situ so either ductal and also this is going to be the is a invasive type and non invasive type and also hormonal imbalance so because of the hormone uh, estrogen receptor progesterone receptor and also we are going to see the hr2 that is hc2 that is a human epidermal uh, growth factor also so these are the some different type of the uh, breast cancers so coming to the we can check for the signs and symptoms of the breast cancers so these signs and symptoms of the breast cancers are important to identifying the what type of the cancers we are going to uh, Uh, depends upon the involvement of the breast cancers so normal breast cancers so depends upon the malignant and benign tumors the symptoms will be different so here is going to be the, the most common symptom is the lump in the breast and also the lump may be is the mobile and also sometimes depends upon the type of the cancer if the benign is going to be the is a mobile and also cancer is not going to be not mobile and also this going to be pain in the armpit or breast that does not seem to related to the women's menstrual period normally in the menstrual uh, period time so the women may chance to get the changes in the breast breast enlargement and also may chance to feel the tenderness and swelling but after the menstruations the breast comes to the normal but who are having the breast cancer so it may chance to get the abnormality such as the like a tenderness and swelling and also may chance to get the pain and also pitting or redness of the skin of the breast is like in the skin uh, on the orange so be if it inflammatory conditions the skin is going to be become the like a reddish and also appearance of the orange uh, orange color appearance so and also the rash around the one nipples so may chance to get the rash especially in case of the uh, pager disease is going to give the like a rash and also oozing and also like eczema appearance and coming to the swelling and so like the maybe in the armpit because of the involvement of the lymph nodes lymph nodes may become the enlargement so it may gives the lymph node uh, and swelling in the armpits an area of the thickened tissue in the breast breast tissues so the breast the area is going to get the swelling and also it's going to give the thickness so one of the nipple has discharge sometimes it may contain the blood so depends upon the person to person may vary so it may give the blood and also some discharge like a white discharge and serous discharge may chance to get so most commonly is a cancer related one is going to give the discharge of the blood so that this nipple discharge in the appearance it may be is the becomes the uh, sunken or is inverted so that means the nipple is going to become the inverted is a, is going to give the okay, i'll show this okay here so here is going to be if you see the nipple is going to be inverted so it is pull inside so that is the major signs and symptom the symptom of the breast cancers and next one is the nipple skin and breast skin may be the the started to peel and scaly and flake so depends upon the type of the breast cancer the nipple changes is going to be happen so if you see the inflammatory is going to get the like a redness and also sharpen the nipple and it's game may give the tenderness but in case of the pager type of the uh breast cancer it may give us the scaly and also it peel appearance so if you see that we are going to find the the uh, lump in the breast and also skin is going to get the dimples so these are the the some important signs and as the skin color also going to be change so depends upon the maybe is going to be the dark or maybe is a bluish discolorations and also changes in how the nipple looks like a pulling in or maybe nipple so sometimes is going to nipple size and also is going to be inwards or outwards 
and also may chance to get the discharge from the nipples, either the blood or serous or white discharge. So may happen in the from the nipple region. So the symptoms are the pain and redness, scaleness and itchy, skin thickenings, inward nipples and discharge. So these are the commonest signs and symptoms of the breast cancers. So what is the diagnosis of the breast cancers? So how we are going to diagnose the breast cancers? So these methods of the diagnosis, so these diagnostic tests and procedures, so depends upon the type of the breast cancer. So what we are going to find uh, the, uh, with the physical examinations. So depends upon the physicians. So how to do the, through the physical examination, after physical examinations, how to refer the, so some different special investigation procedures. So that is through the breast examinations, mammograms, ultrasound, MRI scan, and also biopsy. So these are the some uh, special investigation procedures to diagnose the breast cancers. So breast examinations. So these breast examinations are going to be the clinical breast examinations and also self breast examination. These are going to be two types of the breast examinations. So clinical breast examinations. So the women in the early 20s and 30s should have a clinical breast examinations at least every three years. So with the physicians and also under the physician supervisions, I have to go undergo for the, the clinical examinations. So in the clinical examinations, the breast examinations will do, the physicians are going to be check the breast examinations to identify the normal tissues or any, if any differentiate between the normal tissues and abnormal tissues, any swelling or any dimple formations, any skin color changes, any changes in the like a, uh, appearance of the shape or uh, the size of the breast, is the SM symmetry or asymmetry of the breast or any like a, any uh, nodule formations, any lymph node enlargement. So under the like a supervision of the like a uh, healthcare providers, our physicians are going to identify with uh, like a, in the breast examination to differentiate the normal cell growth and also abnormal cell growth. So that is the breast examinations, that's the clinical examinations. If there any swelling or any discharge, so immediately, so the, uh, the physicians are going to refer to the special investigation procedures such as the imaging techniques and also biopsies. So in the self-examinations, in the previous classes, we already discussed, so how to do the self-examinations at least every month. So after the, the menstruations, after the fifth to like a seventh day, so if they check the breast examinations with the palpating the breast with the, the finger pads, so around in the circular manner, in the supine positions and also standing positions. So in front of the mirrors, if they check, you know, so uh, every month if they check, if they identify any abnormality immediately, if they consult the physicians, so according to the physician suggestions with the investigation procedures, if you identify the, the early stages, in the early stages, the prevention will be easy and also cure also very easy. easy. So that is the importance of the, the self-examination. So self-examination is the option for the women starting in their 20s. So every, like in the 20 age groups, at least uh, every month after the menstruation, if they, did, if they check for the self-examinations, so they can check the any abnormality in the breast. Any changes detected should be reported to the medical experts and also is conducted is a standing or reclining. So you have to do in front of the mirror in the standing positions and also in the lying position or reclining position. So if they check the, the self-examinations, use the finger pads and also just closely, gently, uh, very close to the breast tissues, but should not give them more pressure to the breast tissues. So if you apply the finger pads over the breast tissues in the circular manners and also in the horizontal and also vertical, all the directions have to do. If they find any abnormal tissue or any swelling, any lump, so if is it movable or not movable, how to identify during the self-breast examination. So in the lying position also how to do in the reclining positions. So how to do in the, from the side to side and also from the up and down, how to do in the, all the directions. So coming to the imaging techniques. So these imaging techniques are the important thing is they're going to be mammograms. So these mammograms are the special investigation procedures, nothing but is an X-ray for the breast. So normally is a, most of the times, the X-rays are going to take for the bones and to identify the any fracture or any abnormal development, any cancer. But this special investigation procedure, especially for the breast, so we are not going to do any like a 
uh, investigation with the mammogram only for except for the breast so these are going to be used as very small amount of the radiations so these are going to be do the screening the mammograms and diagnostic mammograms so we are going to do the for the purpose of the screening and for the purpose of the diagnostic purpose so these mammograms are the these technologies will position your breast for the test so they are going to position the breast for the examinations the breast is pressed between the two plates of the the flattened and also spread the tissues so they are going to put the is going to put the two surface over the surfaces so here is going to be placed the breast on the surface mammogram surface so the x rays are going to be penetrate the breast tissues will give the image about the complete the structure of the breast tissues so the pressure lasts only few seconds while the picture is taken so they are going to the pressure is going to be happening this comes so this is going to use the these plates are going to use the pressure to the breast before going to the x ray taking the picture and also image so the breast and also plates are repositioned and then the another picture taken so they are going to take another pictures the whole process takes the 20 minutes so this is a special investigation procedures so this whole process takes the 20 minutes so it's going to give the clear image through the x ray beams so if you see the the normal uh, breast and also abnormal breast so here is going to be the normal breast so we are not going to be like identify the the bank cancerous cells but in the benign cells so in the benign test uh, tumors so the test uh, the size is going to be increased and also the shape also going to be altered the density also going to be changed and here if you see the cancerous cells also it gives the abnormality so where they having the cancers is the ductal or is the lobes so is going to give the density also is going to show the the hyperdensity areas coming to the another type of the investigation procedure breast ultrasounds so these ultrasound waves also to outline the body parts so these are the sound waves the echoes are is picked up by the computer to create the picture on the computer scene so the sound waves pick the whole like a image of the breast and also it give the so where the abnormality is there it shows on the the computer screen so these going to be used to investigate the concerns found the mammograms so these are also going to be used with the uh, uh, the x rays and so they are going to compare the mammograms and also ultrasound but here they are going to use the sound waves along with uh, some ultrasonic gels to so apply over the breast tissues so these sonic waves are going to detect the where the uh, detect the about the size and shape and also distribution of the cells is going to be we can detect with the ultrasonic waves so this application of the ultrasonic waves to the breast tissues so we are going to find the the abnormal size and shape of the breast tissues we are going to get on the the computer screen so it will give reveals the abnormality of the breast so coming to the another like investigation imaginary investigations procedure mri so if it is not identify any abnormality so if you want exactly so which tissues are involved what is the extent of the tissues so we can find in the mri scans so these mris are used as uh, a magnet and radio waves so these are going to be helpful to cross sectional images of the body so what levels so if we are going to the cross sectional of the tissues for example if you take the breast you are going to like a slices appearance so which slice is affected so what is the depth of the penetrations so these scans are going to the scans takes a longer time compared to the other test so used if the views areas are concerned found on the mammogram so if you found out the, in the mammogram if you find the like a tumors so if you want to identify the which is going to be so what level and also uh, how much extension is there so we are going to be identify the mri scans so the patient must be inside the narrow tube face down the, the special platform so he is going to be is a uh, especially the special equipment for the mri scan so they have, the patient is go will inside to the the tube so the the magnetic resonance will come and also it gives the the clear image in the breast tissues so the platform has opening and for each breast so that allows the image to be taken without the pressing the breast tissues so here you can see here this so this going to be open so this platforms are going to be exactly placed the the, mag, the magnetic resonance is going to be is absorbed the where the breast tissue is there so it will give the clear image so to detect the abnormal tissue development so after detecting uh, this uh, breast so in this one is going to show the because of the breast tissue is going to be placed in between the surface areas 
so it detect the the magnetic resonance so it shows the abnormality of the breast tissues so another treatment another investigation procedure is the biopsy so biopsy is nothing but so to uh, especially to uh, we are going to collect the some tissues from the breast so if we do the the histopathological investigation procedures so we are going to identify the so what the abnormal cells are there in the tissues so this biopsy is done when the other tests shows that the, you might the breast cancers so that means in case of the mammogram and also in case of the ct mri scan and the other blood tests and also physical examinations if you found if you suspect any disease so we can send take the like for send for the biopsies so here we have to take the small piece of the breast we have to remove through the surgical procedures so these we have to send to the investigation procedures so these are the so many different types of the biopsies are there so these the biopsies are going to be the fine needle aspirations so that is biopsies and also core needle biopsies vacuum assisted biopsies surgical biopsies also called as open biopsies and the lymph node biopsies so many different types of the biopsy test uh, image uh, like uh, investigation procedures are there so first one is the fine needle biopsies so nothing but is the aspiration of the uh, breast tissues so we are going to use the small needle is going to be used so is extract the fluid from the lump so how to insert the needle into the lump how to extract the fluid from the lump and also these things are sometimes we have to use the the we have to use the uh, ultrasound scan so we place the probe so this probe is going to use the the video guided anal video guided you know, like a analysis so where exactly having the lump or cancer involvement so there we have to insert the the syringe and also draw the fluid from the lump so this is the this is called as the fine needle aspirations this is the simple test but not 100% accurate but that is the main disadvantage of the fine needle aspiration and also next one is the core needle biopsy test core needle biopsy test means so the needle is going to be a bit larger than the <coughs> syringe so here are going to insert the this needle is a bigger size we are going to remove the the more tissue from the breast tissue so with this one so we are going to give the the results will be more accurate and also it will be clear so here we are going to do use the help of the ultrasound and we are going to use the this the core needle biopsy with the uh, using the big, like larger size of the needle so next one is the vacuum assisted biopsies so we are going to do the vacuum like we are going to give the pressure to the breast tissues so done with the system such as the ATEC that is automated tissue excisions and also collections so this is guided by the mri scan so while doing the mri scan so we are going to provide the vacuum and also we are going to give the like automated tissue excisions so this is going to be first the skin is numbed and also small cut is made in at the the tissue levels so where the like having the like abnormal cell growth so nodule so there we are going to take the the like tissue from the through the mri guided like uh, extractions a halo probe is put through the cut into the breast tissues so the piece of the tissue suck outside so through the assistance of the with the mri scan while mri uh, giving the mri scan we are going to locate the where exactly involvement of the tissues so there we are going to put the like a halo tube so this halo through the halo tube we are going to tuck the okay, suck the, the breast tissues this breast tissues we are going to send to the investigation processes so surgical biopsy also called as open biopsy so there we are going to open the breast tissues under the anesthesia so we have to take the small piece of the breast tissues so this breast uh, part or whole lump is extracted and also for the studies so either small piece of the breast tissue or maybe whole like a lump is excreted and also extracted to send for the investigation and further like a further studies so that is called as the surgical or open biopsies so in open biopsies under the anesthesia we have to give the anesthesia then have to extract and open the lump either spot or whole lump have to remove and send for the investigation procedures and also next one is the the lymph node biopsies so these are going to be is a removal of the fluid or removal of the lymph node either fluid have to take or maybe is the lymph node have to take it so if we, we are going to do the the needle biopsy this is been the through the needle biopsy we are going to remove the the fluid through the surgical procedures we are going to remove the lymph nodes so this is going to be the open one surgical procedures so this is going to use the needle biopsies we are going to remove only fluid 
So these are the some investigation procedures of the breast cancer. So, <clears throat> so that is about the investigation procedures. I think so much of this. This is a very large topic. I think hopefully until now you understand clearly about the what is the breast cancer, what is the incidence of the breast cancer, and also what are the risk factors, what are the different type of the breast cancers we discussed here, and what are the investigation procedures, what are the Im imaging investigation procedures, what is the biopsy procedures we discussed here. So hope you understand clearly. If you have any doubts, you can ask, you can send me a message, I can clarify your doubts. So the remaining topics about the other investigation procedures, the management, medical management, and surgical management, and also post like a mastectomy, what is the management, like a physiotherapy management? So what are the like a post-surgical management? We will discuss in the, the next classes. That's all about the today's topic. So thank you very much. See you in the next class.